Thanks for joining us here on 9 News Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. Colorado had near record statewide snowpack this winter with the San Juans and the Gunnison River basins in particular getting almost historic levels of snowfall this past winter. But now that it is spring, the snowmelt has already begun. Is flooding going to be a threat for our rivers and our streams and our overall water basins this upcoming spring and early summer season? And how will all that water affect our summer wildfire season in the mountains for a bit more of a climate perspective. We're now joined by one of the best people to speak about all this. Of course, Colorado's assistant state climatologist, Dr. Becky Bollinger. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here today. Thanks for having me, Chris. So first of all, Becky, could you put into perspective just how much snow we got this past winter, how that compares historically? So if we are looking at the areas that you talked about, like the San Juans, the Gunnison Basin, even up in the Yampa Basin around Steamboat, we're talking about areas that have gotten more snowpack than they've seen in, you know, possibly over 20 years. Um, we don't have snowpack records that really go back 100 years like we do some temperature and precipitation records, but we have it long enough to know that um, this is pretty anomalous for our area. Um, we, we still get some decent snowpack seasons like 2019, but uh, this one even beat out 2019 for a lot of places. And it's you know kind of a great example that we can still get these big snowpack years. And overall, I would say, would you consider this be good news, the fact that we saw this much snowpack? This, I, I know we'll get into more details on that, but would you generally consider it good news? I absolutely consider it good news. <laughs> That's great news. I'm having trouble with the mute button there. But um, I guess from the bad news perspective, one of the big concerns perhaps from all this snow melt or snowpack that we got is the snow melt and how much water will eventually come from this. How concerned are you about the potential for springtime flooding as a result of the snow melt? Right. I mean, any time that you're going to get a lot more water than you typically expect, um, there's always going to be that risk of flooding because there's only so much that the ground can hold and absorb into the soils, especially when we're talking about rocky mountains. Rocks don't take in as much as, you know, nice soils can. And so whatever is not going to go into the soils is going to run off. And the big factors in that are how much total snow you have and how fast it's going to melt. And so when we see uh, an example like uh, last week, earlier in April, for example, when we had really warm temperatures, that's when we really started kicking that melting into high gear. And we quickly saw those rivers uh, bump up. We did have some flooding issues in some areas. And that's due to that um, high rate of melting when it gets really warm outside. Now, the most perfect scenario, which is what we've seen, is that the temperatures cooled back down and everything slowed back down. And so that is really the perfect world scenario you want for snow melt is to have the warm days, but not all too warm and all at once. Um, you don't want to just go straight from winter into summer. You know, you want that nice extended spring period in there that's going to uh, draw out that melting. And when you draw out that melting, obviously you're not going to be sending it all down the river at once. You're going to be timing it a little bit more, allowing a little bit more time for the, that to get into the soils. And so part of what we're seeing is going to be really dependent on um, how we're going to see warmer conditions interplay with cooler conditions as we go into the next month or so. Um, if we keep on to these cold conditions, um, that will delay the melting, which seems good. It might be good now, but that could be prom problematic if you're going to keep everything until June. Then all of a sudden you turn it on at 90 degrees and it's all going to melt at once at a super fast rate. And then we could see some of those flooding concerns. Um, the final point I want to make, though, is Colorado, uh, our geography, the topography is really good at handling snowmelt. You know, we've got all these great canyons. And so our snowmelt and runoff system is pretty well behaved so that we don't have some of these really devastating 
risky flooding issues that they might have in say California, where a lot of areas are just kind of bowls. And so all that is just gonna run off into a tire and in, into a bowl and flood. Um, we have a system that is um, actually well equipped to handle a lot of this runoff and kind of just send it on down the stream with minimal impact, if, even if there is some minor flooding. That's really good news. Uh, I, I did not know that. Um, yeah. Becky, a bit more specifically about the snowmelt across the state. I know we're speaking rather generally statewide here. Are there parts of the state, perhaps the San Juans that saw the most snow or maybe the Gunnison River Basin, where you're a bit more concerned than others or topographical concerns? Again, are there other parts of the state that you might be a bit more concerned about? Yeah, I. once we get into those really small scale differences. I'm not as familiar. I'm sure there are low-lying valley type areas where that water is at risk of pooling um, or areas that um, maybe the, the soils won't take in as much, so it's all going to run off. Um, and so I'm sure that there are small areas that will be at more risk for uh, flooding and some minor damage. But in terms of bigger scale and, um, you know, bigger areas or, or larger scale events with high impact, um, I don't foresee that that we'll have anything uh, too major. Although, uh, you again, you want, might increase the risk if we hold on to this longer and later into the season. Good, good insight. And frankly, it sounds like good news, hopefully, uh, as long as we can get that bit more of a gradual amount. Now, with that in mind, let's say we have a reasonably standard snow melt within a, a roughly middle 40% of what you might consider to be uh, standard. Uh, how, how will that impact our summer wildfire season? Yeah, so right now, I think that we have a pretty good outlook for a lot of our mountain areas in terms of not having that risk for large and devastating wildfires like we do in times of drought or when we've had low snowpack. Uh, typically, we know that June is a very um, active month for wildfires in the mountains. And that's largely due because of the fact that the snowpack has melted off and they've entered the dry season and it's before the monsoon, monsoon season kicks off. And so we have that higher risk and that's typically when we see um, wildfire activity pick up, climatologically speaking, in our mountains. Now, um, when we have drought, it can obviously be a much worse situation. You're gonna get wildfires anyway, but now they become harder to control. They can get bigger faster. And that's when we have situations like um, what we've seen in uh, years, uh, I don't wanna to point to 2020 because that one was a little weird and later in the season, but uh, say in the, in the San Juan mountains, for example, the drought of 2018, and then they had the 416 fire in June, that is something that uh, those kind of go hand in hand. And so when we don't have drought, when we have high snowpack and we know it's gonna melt out nicely, um, we know that June is going to be at a little bit of a better outlook. That's certainly hopefully good news, at least for the start of summer. Now, uh, when it comes to the kind of climatological outlook in terms of rain precipitation for the front range, is there, have you noticed or is there a correlation between getting a good snowpack season and what we can expect for the upcoming monsoon and the upcoming summer season for us along the front range and throughout the state? I sure wish we had mm. something that assigned that amount of predictability. Um, you know how it is. One year does never, never matches the other. Yep. And so it's, uh, <laughs> I, I'd say right now, what we're looking at for summer precipitation, it's really a crapshoot. It's, it's a game of uh, just betting. And, you know, we could have we, it, we could have just as likely a very hot, dry summer as we do a, a cooler, wetter summer, although cooler summers is getting probably uh, decreasing in frequency. Um, but as, as far as, you know, whether it's going to be drier or wetter or how many thunderstorms you have or what the monsoon is going to bring for us, um, I think that's pretty much up in the air right now. And um, I, I would not place my bets. I would not bet large amounts of money either direction. 
All right. Now, I, 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 if I'm correct, Becky, I, I believe that the monsoon is still climatologically a very big mystery, isn't it? You know, in terms of how the monsoon is, there's no really big telltales, you know, El Nino, La Nina um, ahead of time, right? I think that that is true. There's um, a lot of mystery in, in how it's uh, driven and and what kind of kicks it off. And I think that there have been studies that have found some connections between El Nino, La Nina and the monsoon, but that's really where the starting point is, right? When we're talking about the monsoon in Arizona and New Mexico, as it pushes further north into our area, we're adding that much more uncertainty to it. And so it's even harder to predict um, for our area north of the Four Corners region, I would say. Well, in the meantime, it sounds like we have perhaps, hopefully, knock on wood, some tentative good news to celebrate. The fact that hopefully June will at least have some of the snowpack around that hopefully will mitigate the front end of the mountain fire season. Is that a correct assessment? And the Colorado is also, you mentioned, well situated to deal with all the snow melt as well. Yep, I would say uh, despite some risk of flooding that the benefits are going to far outweigh those risks and those negatives. So uh, celebrate the snowpack that we got and um, enjoy it and always be aware that, you know, we're in Colorado and the situation can change fast. So uh, it's not really any indication of, of what we're going to see in the summer or with the monsoon. So keep an eye out for future outlooks. We'll take the good news while we got it. I'm going to yes. hold you to that. So, Dr. D Becky Bollinger, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. And thanks for your expertise and your insight today. Absolutely. Thank you.